the first really big adventure that we ever uh, had was to East Africa, and that was back in 1970. Uh, it's something that, uh, that Ted and I had in common when we met. We, we both talked about wanting to travel to the world's wild places and, you know, to go to Africa to see the great birds. And, um, and so that was really uh, was exciting <laughs> trip. And we were bit by the travel oh, bug. Yeah. I mean, we, we hadn't figured out that we could do books with it yet, but it, yeah. but it was certainly uh, the, the beginning. We, we made a trip to India uh, specifically to see this amazing part of the forest in uh, Nagarholi uh, in southern India. And when we got there, uh, we were introduced to the most incredible animal we'd ever seen in our lives, right? Absolutely. Biggest, in, gorillas, big, yes. biggest <laughs> Indian elephant we'd ever seen, and he was absolutely awesome. And we said to our guide, who is this? I mean, this amazing animal. And he said, that's Drona. Drona is the royal elephant. He will be carrying the uh, golden howdah in the next Dasara uh, festival. We said, what, what's, what is that about? What is all... So he explained to us that would be the following year, right? Yes. And we said, we have to come back and see this animal, carry that, with a million people watching and a, an hours long parade. So we just had to see that. And uh, we went back the following year. We went back the following year, and I noticed that everybody um, seemed slightly different than, than the year before. They were a little quieter, and uh, we found out that Drona had uh, died. He had been feeding in the forest and reached up and found the, the one high tension wire that, that ran through the forest. And when he pulled down the vegetation, um, he pulled that wire down and electrocuted himself. And we were just devastated. And they said, well, don't worry, we have another elephant. And um, people say he's not uh, quite as grand uh, and doesn't have the same aura as uh, Drona. And then we got to meet him. And then we got to meet him. And he was magnificent. <laughs> That's kind of how the yeah, whole thing yeah. started. You know, when you're dealing with, uh, a lot of our books deal with wildlife and events that you have no control over what's going to happen. And um, and this was a, a tragic thing that happened. So we decided to, to take the kind of poignancy of that event, weave it into the story, and then follow the new replacement elephant, Balarama, to see the story became, would he be able to do this the first time around? And so we had another story, a different story, almost a better story. I, I think if there was a moment of panic, it was because the people there who knew Drona and, you know, he, he carried this golden howdah for so many years, um, they, they just couldn't rise to the occasion of a new elephant. And of course, there was no way that Balarama was going to uh, take Drona's place in for their them. eyes. For them. Yeah. For them. Yeah. And as it turned out, uh, they were just overwhelmed with his, his uh, ability and, and the way he took, took to being the royal elephant. Working together is, uh, for us, people say, how can you, you guys live together, you work together, you have, <laughs> you have separate studios, but you see each other 24 hours a day, how can you stand it, you know what I mean? We don't have any problems with that. We have each other to bounce off of, which in, in, um, in a way is, is like a godsend. We're, we both have the same sensibilities and we both are, are artists, so we can... Uh, uh, criticize each other, and um, I think it would be very difficult if we didn't have each other. We'd be we'd be working like hermits. We'd be working all by ourselves. We wouldn't have anybody to, to to say, "Is it good? Is it bad? Am I on the right track?" It is interesting when we do these books together that that we have such different styles. Because my what I call field sketches, even though they're they're really done from memory, because we don't have time on these trips to, to for me to sit and quickly sketch things. But I kind of take the reader the story with this. It's like they're, they're walking behind us and experiencing all the, the funny things that happen and, and the, the interesting details that we see. And then when we get to um, a big uh, panoramic view of what we've come to see, like in, in the case of Balrama, uh, you know, the royal elephants, then Ted will do these, these big uh, full-color double-page spreads that make the, feel, make the reader feel like they're standing right there with us. We want children to, to, to love to, to, animals, yeah, to love animals, and to and, and to uh, get the same itch that we've had for all, all our lives is to get out and see the world. If that, if that, if they look at Bellarama and they see that and they love that elephant and they love what they're seeing of that fantastic part of India, we want people to say, "I have to go to that place. I have to mm -hmm. see that." Mm -hmm. And if that, we instill that in in our readers. That's 
That's mainly what we want. 